We're about 15 minutes away from a 3A state championship. Uh, it was yesterday when Morton won their semifinal against Chicago Simeon. They did it with a huge second half from Brandy Bisping. Also, Tinley Dow with a, uh, a big game. 18 to 22 from the free throw line. That is the Potter's M.O. It sent them to a 56-41 win. Earned them a chance to play for their third straight state title. Coach, I know that you guys are almost used to being in this position, but is there a different feel to today by chance? Kind of the same feel. I got those butterflies. I know the kids are excited. Um, we're going to be ready to go. I know you said you'd be nervous and have a hard time sleeping last night. How did you sleep? I actually probably slept better than I, I, when I from last time I talked to you. And maybe I mean, we're not comfortable. It's going to be a heck of a game, I think. It's going to be a raucous crowd. But playing them a couple years ago, they got a lot of the same personnel. We're a little bit familiar with them. so. It, it didn't take me so long last night. That's the dynamic that's a little different in this one. They might be chomping at the bit because they probably got revenge on their mind. How much have you guys talked about that, knowing that they're going to come out and win a piece? Well, I think that we've got two hungry teams. Who's got the bigger burning desire today? Obviously, everybody said, you know, we've had us on their target, us on their target. We want to be the hunter today. They want to be that too. We'll see what happens. The one thing that is the same, no doubt, is this huge behind you how big of a help are they for you guys i hope they help us to win by one at least that would be a state championship in your third in a row good luck coach <laughs> appreciate it thank you very much thank you that is bob becker the morton head coach of the back-to-back -back state champion morton potters and he'll be trying to get this team back into the winner's circle for the third straight season we'll be back to talk to jr baduris after this Rochester surprised many around the state with Friday's win over undefeated 3A number one Marshall. They did not surprise themselves. Angela Perry turned it on to score 14 of her 18 points in the second half. And the Rockets held the high scoring commandos to 35 in a 46 to 35 semifinal win. And we have got the Rochester Rockets head coach J.R. Baduras with us. Defense so important for you guys yesterday holding that team to 35. What's the number that you've got in mind for today or is there one in this situation? I think so. We know it's going to be a low scoring game with as good as Morton plays defense. Possessions are going to be at a premium. Our focus is on single digit quarters. We want to hold them in single digits. We feel like if we can hold them to four single digit quarters. we got a great shot to win the game. Specifically Brandy Bisping is sort of the engine that makes them go. I know you've got Angela Perry inside that will help neutralize her at the rack a little bit but how do you stop her in transition? You got to find her first because she's so good at the trail of pulling up and hitting that three. If you let her get ahead of steam going, she can get all the way to the rim. So on a live ball, you just got to find her, get her stopped, make sure she doesn't get a clean look at a rim or, or ahead of steam going to the rim. Two years ago, you were here and you lost to this Morton team. And I know that you've spent a lot of time thinking about that since then. Did you ever really think you'd get another chance at them in this setting? You know what? Not really, only because it's so hard to get here. It's hard to win a regional. Um, it's super hard to get to the state tournament. And if you do get here, there's no guarantee that you're going to see the team you played two years ago. But we're just fortunate for the opportunity. Our kids have accomplished so much. And the message was go out and, and play your butts off, you know, and play to win. But at the same time, you got to soak this in and enjoy it, too. I think there were some people who were surprised when you guys took down undefeated number one Marshall yesterday. I think that there would probably be a lot who would be surprised again today if you beat the two time defending state champ inside your camp. Would there be any surprise at that? was the, the outcome today. I don't think so. We've got a special opportunity not only to win a title, to beat the two-time defending champ to do it, but to have to go through the one, the two, and the three in the final AP rankings, which would make it more special. Rochester is back-to-back -back state champions in soccer. They won another football state title this year. That's six. How proud would you be to join the ranks as a state champion? Yeah, I want a seat at that table with Coach Leonard and Coach Kutcher. That would be nice to have a ceremony instead of just uh, cutting the cake for those guys. Well, good luck today, Coach. Today's a chance to get it. Thank you, Zach. All right, J.R. Baduris, the head coach of the Rochester Rockets. They will try to take down the king, Morton, the two-time defending state champion in this 3A championship game.
championship Saturday at Redbird Arena on the campus of Illinois State University. Round two of the IHSA State Basketball Series wraps up today. We have got a prize fight on tap for you in this 3A state title game, a 2015 state championship game rematch between Rochester and Morton. Those back-to-back -back state champions looking to turn it into a three-peat. You all know about Brandi Bisping playing in her final game for the Potters, but keep an eye on sophomore Tinley Dowell, who had 15 in yesterday's win over Simeon. She is the next wave of talent for the Potters. Needless to say, the well will not be dry after today in Morton. Angela Perry started as a sophomore in that game for Rochester two years ago. The 6-3 Bowling Green State commit turned it on in the second half of Friday's semifinal against Marshall. Four points in the first half, 14 in the second. She helped the Rockets break a halftime tie and earn them a rematch with the two-time state champs. Welcome in, everyone. Zach Kirker above Doug Collins Court at Redbird Arena, and we have got a really good 3A state championship for you. If you prefer your state championships full of storylines, that's exactly what is on tap today. Let's take a look at the entire schedule for this afternoon and evening. That Marshall-Simeon game in the books. Marshall is your 3A third place champion. Rochester and Morton, as has been discussed, a rematch coming up momentarily. Tonight in Class 4A, the third place game between Friend and Montini Catholic in Geneva, who made the championship game on the last second buzzer beater last night, will get undefeated Edwardsville. Now with the call of that 3A state championship game, let's send it down to Nathan Beliva and Christy Faulkner. Thanks, Zach. Welcome down course side. I'm Nathan Beliva alongside Christy Faulkner. And Christy, when they throw the ball up in November, this is what everybody plays for. State title game, Morton, Rochester. It's going to be a good one. This is going to be a lot of fun. This is just what you said, what everybody plays for. And it's going to be a great game. I think that, you know, it'll it'll be interesting to see who can handle the pressure, who can handle the moment. This is a big stage. Mentally, who's going to be able to be calm and centered and take care of the ball and take care of things when crunch time happens? They've played before for a state title. Morton started this current run in 2015 when they came back from a halftime deficit to beat Rochester. Take a look at that game recap there and what they were able to do in 2015. You see Lauren Sapetti for Rochester had 19, but Morton came back. Chandler Ryan with 20 points. Brandy Bisping, who's still here, 10 points, 8 rebounds. Both teams were full of sophomores who played, or seniors who played as sophomores in that state title game back two years ago. It's a lot of experience for both, for both teams, and that's something that, you know, they're going to rely on. They're going to need that. And this is what this is what these seniors play for and, and to leave their own legacy is what they want to do this afternoon. Well, the Morton players have already created a legacy. Now they're trying to become just the fifth team in the history of this state to three-peat. You got to feel they're not going to feel the pressure at all today. That's what's amazing about both these teams is they are so composed and they do. They represent their coaches on the floor and both coaches are great leaders, but also they don't get rattled. And you can see that it transfers over to their players. Let's take a look at the brackets and how they got to this point to be able to play for a state championship. Morton knocked off Simeon. That game was tied at 22 at halftime yesterday. Morton asserted themselves in the third quarter, took control, and then Rochester did the same thing. They limited a very high-powered Marshall offense to just 35 points, one by 11. We heard Zach tell us earlier, Rochester's already beaten number one, number three, and the team that was tied with them for number five, now can they take out number two? Take a look at yesterday's action. Morton knocked off Simeon. And they really did so with high pressure, but they also knocked down some three-pointers here inside. It's Warham from Bisping. They were able to move the ball around. Ball movement, and Tenley Dowell buried the three. Her and Josie Becker were huge in the first half. Brandy Bisping, who will score here, was huge in the second half. 20 points, 10 rebounds for Bisping. And look at that, the fly right by. Kaylee Jones finishes, and now they're in position for the dream of a three-peat. On the other side, Rochester gave Marshall everything they could handle. You see him inside there through Lyric Boone. Aubrey Magro was fantastic, and so is Angela Perry. They rode her. They all jumped on the seniors back in the second half. She carried them, and then Magro with the three knocks it down. Rochester with a double-digit win as well to get them back into the state title. So Rochester, Morton, playing for a trophy. There it is. That's the trophy they want to take back home to campus in 32 minutes of action. Rochester and Morton starting lineups. Tip-off coming up next from Redbird Arena.
the 2017 IHSA Basketball State Finals are brought to you by Country Financial. At Country Financial, we understand that helping you means knowing you. Take charge of owning your future with Country Financial. Call your local rep at 1-866-COUNTRY or visit ownyourfuture.com. It's time for the National Anthem of the starting lineups. Let's get over to the PA here at Doug Collins Court. School in the singing of our National Anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rocked, the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the And now for the starting lineups of the Class 3A championship game in the 2017 IHSA Girls State Basketball Tournament. First, from Rochester High School, a senior, number 14, Lyric Boone. For Morton, a sophomore, number one, Tenley Dowell. For Rochester, a senior, number 20, Aubrey Magro. For Morton, a junior, number three, Josie Becker. For Rochester, a senior, number 24, Nicole Robinson. For Morton, a junior, number 10, Cassidy Sherman. For Rochester, a senior, number 35, Madison Faulkner. For Morton, a senior, number 13, Brandy Bisping. For Rochester, a senior, number 55, Angela Perry. And for Morton, a senior, number 40, J.C. Warren. We've got our starting lineups presented by Taco Bell for the state title tilt. We've got Aubrey Magro, Nicole Robinson, Madison Faulkner, Lyric Boone, and Angela Perry for the Rockets. Magro had a huge game yesterday to help Angela Perry on the inside. For Morton, Tenley Dowell and Josie Becker, the guards, led the way in the first half. And then Brandy Bisping and J.C. Warham got it done inside in the second half. Cassidy Sherman is the fifth starter for the Morton Potters, who are looking for their 100th win over the last three years and to grab a third straight state title. The team shake hands at midcourt. Sign of sportsmanship here for the IHSA Class 3A state final. Rochester Rockets coached by J.R. Beduris his 14th overall season. His sixth at Rochester and 800 winning percentage. 160 up, 40 down is third trip to state. One with Carrollton and two now with Rochester, a second place trophy. There's Bob Becker, 18 years, 414 up, 144 down, looking for a third straight state title for the Sycamore High School and Illinois University grad. As we are underway with the state championship. Rochester inside immediately with it, trying to get the ball against this Morton defense. Nicole Robinson had it. Now it's Faulkner. Outside, boom, swing at Magro. She was there energizing yesterday when it looked like Marshall was on the verge of taking control early. Magro had a couple big shots 
and really got her team going. They go inside. That's the senior, Angela Perry, with the first bucket. Important for them to get her going early. That's Rochester's bread and butter right there. That's where they want to go all day, and they'll keep going there as long as they can. Ronald Lorenzo, Ronald Ritter, Todd Riker get the honor of blowing the whistles for the state championship game. Congratulations to those three gentlemen on that honor of being selected. The Paula State title game. Kenley Dowell out front. They swing it around, and Lyric Boone usually gets the other team's best player. She's on Bisping in this man-to-man -man defense. Bisping's first touch. Now Warren. Becker. Morton plays that four outside, sometimes five outside, especially when Warren's not on the court. She'll try the baseline jumper, no. And Boone the rebound. And good offensive possession, though, by Morton. They took their time. They're not going to be in a rush. They got a good shot. Didn't go down, but good possession. Inside it goes. Boone off the And there, Boone's got two. In the third place game, we had a couple coaches who sat a lot, or in Jonathan Davenport's case, was squatting. These two coaches very rarely stop. They're both very animated on the sidelines, walking up and down. Lots of movement for both Coach Benduris and Coach Becker. We saw Becker dancing at one point. We saw yes. a clip, yep. so he gets into it. He enjoys it. And the super sectional. Coach Benduris, it's almost like he walks a few miles going back and forth in that coach's box. Bisping down low. Fouled and will go to the line. Strong take, Brandy Bisping. To get Morton's first bucket. And here's Lyric Boone off glass. Bisping goes to the line off this strong move against Boone. Nice take, draws a contact and one. Randy Bisping, 20 points. Look at those free throws yesterday, 14 of 16. She already holds the career 3A record. She needs to make four free throws today, and nobody will have made more career free throws at the state level. She'll tie with four, own the record for five, and that record's been around since the mid-90s. Growing up, they had a hoop. They had a barn. They live in more in a rural area. They had a barn and a hoop. I'm sure all that hard work, all those free throws in that barn paid off. Her brother is at Siena. Her sister is Morton's all-time scoring leader. And on the sideline is the assistant coach. And there's a miss inside by Perry. And one and done are the Rockets. Henley Dowell, the sophomore, had a big day yesterday. Gets it to the freshman, Lindsey Dullard. Jones, who just subbed in for Warham at the free throw, has it on the right wing. Tries the reverse layup. Angela Perry having none of that. He said, not my house. <laughs> big block for Perry. Robinson. Faulkner to Perry. Spinning into the lane, Perry follows her own miss. Too strong, though. And there's Lyric Boone. So Lyric Boone working the glass for the offensive putback. And both Perry and Boone both looking to be very aggressive. We talk about the Rochester roster, and they have five seniors that have returned for this season, and they want nothing more than to bring home a championship. All of them had experience in that championship game two years ago. A couple got in just towards the end of the game, but Perry was a big factor in that game. Rochester's played in the state title game three other times. As Jones knocks down a jumper from the elbow. She gave the team a boost in the super sectional on Monday against Stillman Valley. Eight points off the bench. Rochester, those three previous state title games, has led them all at halftime, but they have ended up losing all three of those games, including one to Morton. Faulkner, left side. Robinson from the top of the key, off the mark. Dowell the rebound. Dolar, the freshman, knocks down the three. Morton's got their first lead of the game. And it started with Becker, the savvy player that she is. She penetrated in, knew exactly that she was going to pitch the ball for that three-point shot. Aubrey Magro. And Robinson, right wing. Boom. 
rolls it in. Lyric Boone's had a very nice start to this ball game. She averages 10.2 points per game and a key opponent of the Rockets softball team as well. And she can get it done offensively, but she is their best defender. She always draws that toughest defensive assignment. Bisping goes to the basket, no good, and Boone rips down the board. She gets six of those a game. Second only to Perry, who's at seven per game. And the only thing with Boone that we want to watch is sometimes she has a tendency to get in a little bit of foul trouble, so making sure that she stays out of foul trouble. Right side, Faulkner. And go back to Faulkner. And for Perry, she's double teamed and fouled. Let's see who they get there. A couple of choices on that foul. It's going to go against Brandy Bisping. Two teams trading punches early on as Dollar knocks down the three from the left wing. And on the Rochester side, they get the ball inside to Lyric Boone. We're tied in the state championship game at Redbird Arena. The big crowd, the Morton Potters making the trip over. They come 28 miles to Redbird Arena. The Rochester Rockets on the other side from the Springfield area, 70 miles up I-55 and a nice turnout for this rematch from two years ago. Six minutes in, we're knotted up at eight. Magra finds Faulkner for the Rockets. Evelyn Doolin subbed in for Rochester. She finds Boone, who left it short. And who else but Brandy Bisping to rip down the rebound. She's the career leader in that category at Morton. Becker, nice through, can't connect. Evelyn Doolin will bring it up the floor. She takes over the point guard role when she's out there, even if Robinson stays in the game. There's Faulkner no good. Robinson will slide over to the two. In this case, Robinson went out as Doolin came in. Becker left wing. When you look at the Morton team, and they're all so long, they're versatile. Each player can do a little bit. They can pass, they can shoot. You see this thing right there on the shot, knocks down the 17-footer. But they're able to complement each other so well because each player can do everything. Double digits for Morton in the first quarter. Doolin for three, short. This thing the rebound. Trying to take it all the way, knocked away. Bodies on the floor, and Magro gets it to Boone. You heard Coach Paduras tell Zach Kirker pregame they wanted to hold Morton to single digits in each quarter. Morton does get the 10 here in quarter number one. And they're packing the paint right now. Look at all the space Doolin has with Magro on the left side. They're daring them to shoot. If you get the ball over to Magro, she can knock down that three consistently. This thing's right on Perry, and everybody else playing in the zone for the Potters is Doolin as it knocked away and out of bounds, and it'll stay with Rochester. A couple subs in, Schumann and Jones back in. We take a look at Bisping and her range. You see Perry's a little bit off of Bisping. She knocks down that 17, 8 foot, 18 foot jump shot. And she's one of those players that is ultra competitive. She's the motor and the leader of the Morton team. And 41% from three point range. She also likes to guard the other team's best player. She's doing that right now. Muscling inside against Perry. Heading to Wisconsin, Milwaukee as an all stater. Her and Perry were side by side at halftime of the third place game, getting their all state awards, and it's inside. And let's see where the foul goes here. If it's on Bisping, that's two. And it is. So two fouls on Brandy Bisping in the first quarter, and she will check out. That's an important spot to mark down 10 to 8 with 17 seconds left in the first as Bisping goes to the bench. And that's your leader right there, that when she goes out, she'll still be involved in the game. She'll still be bringing that you know, energy from the bench. But can Morton fill this time while she's not in the game? She's getting instruction from her older sister right now over there on the bench. Brooke, an assistant coach, was leaning behind Coach Davis and giving wisdom to the younger sister, which I'm sure she's done for years. 
Rochester, last seconds of the quarter. They'll try a three. That's short. Missed at the top of the key by Peyton Baduris and ends the first quarter. Very competitive first quarter. Morton on top by two at Redbird Arena. My name is JC Warm, and I'm here with the Morton Potters. My most embarrassing moment of the season is I wore my shorts backwards in a game and did not realize it until halftime. <laughs> my favorite moment of the season has been my friend Courtney Jones and I had to take a trash bag of eggs out and we dropped it and had to clean egg yolk off of the concrete. <laughs> Something that, about Coach Becker that most people don't know is that he loves to wear his daiquiri ice green pants at practice. Fans would be surprised that I watch How I Met Your Mother on a regular basis. Something funny about my teammates that most people don't know is that Courtney Jones can drop a sick beat using pens. <laughs> Courtney Jones getting it done, the hidden talent. Having some fun with us on Thursday. J.C. Warm, her sister Jadison, the star last year, had 21 points in the two games here at State, and now goes to Illinois State. Had to leave yesterday at halftime to go take an anatomy final. But now back to watch her younger sister try to carry on the legacy in search of the three-peat. Becker has it knocked away and a reach-in foul on Doolin. Foul number two against the Rockets. And you talk about J.C. Worm, and she's one of the captains of the team. She brings a lot of toughness inside that they need, especially you know if they get into foul trouble, she's going to check out right now. But but brings that. She's a post defender, rebounder, and battles the bigs down low. With two fouls, Brandy Bisping did not stay on the bench very long. She's ready to trigger the inbounds pass. With Kaylee Jones. So she's got to be careful on the defensive end or going for rebounds. She doesn't pick up that third here in the half. Going right at Lyric Boone. Jones travels. She took that little hop to set herself at the free throw line. Rochester's not turned it over yet. That's the second for Morton in the first nine minutes of game action. Important for Rochester to not turn the ball over. They had 18 yesterday against Marshall in the semifinal. And Morton will feed off of any turnovers they get. To maximize each possession. The, the ball is gold. Robinson, long two, is off the mark, and Bisping for third rebound. Dowell spots up. Too strong. Jones there for the rebound. Pulls it back out. Becker has it knocked away. Then a foul as Jones and Doolin hit the floor. And Jones helps Doolin up. And you can see Coach Becker on the sideline. After that last play, he was looking at Josie and showing her, you know, getting that triple threat position. And when the Morton ball, when the Morton players catch the ball, they always get in triple threat, so they're ready to pass, shoot, and drive. And he was saying to Josie, get in that triple threat. Protect the ball. Dad, daughter, coach, player, double relationship on both sides of the court. Bob and Josie Becker. And JR and Peyton Baduris. There's Faulkner and Robinson. The jumper is good from the corner. Madison Faulkner knocks that down to get us even. And Bob's got a freshman daughter on the team as well in Maddie Becker. So. A pair of daughters on his side for Morton. And for Rochester in that last possession, knocking down that 17-foot jump shot is big because then it takes some of the pressure off. Morton can't pack it in if they're going to knock down those outside shots. Bisping. Drives on Boone. Perry over to help, and the foul called. And it'll be more free throws for Brandy Bisping, and that's two fouls on Lyric Boone. So Curry and Bisping both have two, and here's Faulkner out of the corner, that baseline jumper. Nice job by Faulkner knocking that down, and that's something, that, again, it takes the pressure off of Perry. If they overplay her inside, she's going to make them pay. Free throw is no good. Bisping was 14 out of 16 at the line yesterday. Last year in the semifinal, she was 19 for 21 against Morgan Park. 
54 makes in her career at the Redburn Arena in the state tournament. 87% on the season from the line. No good, and Perry the rebound. Very rare to see Bisping miss both on the trip. Perry did that yesterday, and you can tell Coach Perdurris at halftime was shocked that Perry had missed both on the same trip, and now it happens with Bisping. And part of it can be the emotion of the game, just slowing yourself down. You're through the line, everybody's watching you. You just have to take a deep breath, let things go, and, and take your time. Foul inside, trying to guard Perry. That's on Warham. Bisping's going to come out. She was there on that play as well. The foul was not on her. It was on Warham, her first. Teams four. Magra for Robinson. Inside for Perry. Sealed off for defender nicely, and Rochester regains the lead. And good ball rotation and nice recognition by Rochester that when they swung it, they knew exactly where they wanted to go. It was a really quick pass inside of the post. Cassidy Sherman brings it across, and now with the freshman Dullard. Sherman. Becker, big first half yesterday, making four threes for 12 points. Gives it off to Dowell. He was in double digits yesterday as well and is on the season. Dollard, the freshman runner, no good. And Perry the rebound. And then Dowell got her hand on it but couldn't tie her up. Four rebounds already for Perry. Faulkner. It's one on three there. And Morton secures the board. Dollard. And back to Warren looking for some help, now drives to Dowell. She'll take on Perry, high off the glass, but no good, gets her own miss. Dowell, right place, right time to get that ball. Second offensive board of the game for the Potters. They're making Rochester work on defense. Becker. Looked over at the sideline, backed it out. And Martin is so patient offensively. Down inside, it's kicked. So it will stay Morton Ball, and that hits our official timeout of the second quarter as Brandy Bisping checks back in with two fouls. Angela Perry with a very solid second quarter. Four points, four rebounds, and here she is putting Mort Rochester back on top by two. Rochester leads Morton 12 to 10 in the 3A state championship game. More of the second quarter in just a moment. Up top, Zach Kirker with you above Doug Collins' court. We have got Laren Sepetti, who was a senior on that 2015 team. Rochester lost to Morton in the championship game. Was it harder to play in that game or to watch from the stands now? It is so much harder to watch. Just every call, every basket. I'm so nervous. Is it kind of special that Rochester gets another chance and they get it against Morton? It's Yeah, it means so much. I had an opportunity to address them this morning, and I said, you know, it's one thing to come here, but it's another thing to come here twice as a senior, get payback, so it's awesome. Now, you started at the University of Illinois, but you're at Illinois Wesleyan now playing yes. college ball. You just couldn't stay away, could you? No, it was so boring not having basketball, so I'm really glad to be back. All right, well, get back to your seat and get cheering. They're going to need you, okay? All right, thank you. Laren Sepetti of the 2015 Rochester Rockets. we got a 12-12 game. Back down to you guys. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Larry. Appeared in 18 of the games for the Titans this year. They lost in the D3 tournament last night. So she's back here able to watch her younger sister, a sophomore on the Rochester bench right now. She had 19 of Rochester's 37 in that state title game two years ago. And Rochester gets a turnover here in a tie game. 12-12. And there's the bucket for Rochester. Back and forth we go. And Rochester has not turned the ball over yet. They've done a great job of taking care of the ball. And, and Morton on offense has also done a nice job of, again, we talked about being patient, making the defense work, making that extra pass. You see the turnover right there on cue. Not very Morton-like. Magro leads the break, finds Robinson. Now swing it around the perimeter. Very patient. Try the three. Off the mark.
talked about Lauren Cipetti. She had, I think, 15 points in the first half in 2015 of that championship game. So quite a player. Becker into the lane for the freshman Dullard. Off the mark on the three, Bisping the rebound. <laughs> Pinballed back to her somehow. Laid on the ground. Becker for three. She hit four of those yesterday. Knocks down another 61 on the season for Josie Becker and Morton back in front. Look at all the space Morton will give to the perimeter players. Just to make sure Perry doesn't catch it. Inside it's Doolin, went right at Bisping, but could not score. Inside it will be Rochester Ball. We see the last bucket for the Rockets. Nice drive by Rochester. What Doolin does, and then the other way, Becker found her spot, spotted up. She can hit from all over the three-point arc. We saw her yesterday, left side, top of the key, right side. That time it was right side. She has good range. Peyton Badura subs back in. Coach's daughter in action for Rochester. So catch it off the inbound. Back to Magro. Rochester wants to try and penetrate those gaps, have quick fills, Faulkner. good height. The good layup. By Faulkner. And a foul against Morton. And that's against Dowell, and it'll be free throws for Rochester. Fought there an 80% free throw shooter. Morton students making some noise at that end of the floor, but that does not deter Faulkner. Able to block all of that out. That's the key, right? Yes. <laughs> it's all about the mental game. That's like 90% of the battle. I think Phil Jackson always said when he was coaching the Bulls, it's like 90% as a coach and even as a player, so much of it is the mental part. Nearly 12 points a game, five rebounds. The free throw in and out. And Bisping the rebound. She's already got five of those to go with seven points. Both of these teams were tied at halftime yesterday. We're a minute away from them being tied at halftime today. Magro gets the steal and then double dribbled, and she does not agree with that call. To say the least. <laughs> She's a spunky one. She does. She brings that spark. And she's going to play with passion. You saw her yesterday. She was fired up. And she's not, you know, it doesn't go her way. She's going to let people know. She was a team videographer on Thursday with a handheld camera recording everything they were doing in the shoot around, the team photos, question and answers with us in the media room. Soaking it all in, her second trip to state. Here's Bisbee. Inside Jones, and that's going to be a foul against Magro. It'll send the junior, Kaylee Jones, to the line, where she's a 76% free throw shooter. I think Magro's still upset about that double dribble call. Oh, and a foul to compound it, fourth team foul against the Rockets. That's where Coach Buderis would say, next play, next play. Free throw for Jones is right on the money. Her sister, Courtney, on the roster. And Morton offensively is so hard to defend because they have such good spacing and they're always active. They're moving, they set different kinds of screens, and you, you, there's so much variety, you can't anticipate what they will do next. Free throw in and out, and Perry grabs the board. Five rebounds for Angela Perry, headed to Bowling Green. Last 30 seconds, and there's a steal and then a foul. Sherman got her hands on it, got the steal off the bad pass, and then that cost Magro a foul as well. Her second, you can see Cassidy Sherman fill that passing lane. Kind of came right to her as well. There was a little bit, yeah, the, the pass was telegraphed a little bit, but she's done a nice job anticipating and getting that ball and knocking it away. Bisping with two fouls back in since they've got the ball on offense and can hold for the last shot of the half. And ensure they take the lead into the locker room. Up one here. Bauer moving to the left to Dullard with 10 inside. Jones with a runner off balance, no good. Rebound hits the floor. 
Shot is up, no good, and that's going to bring the first half to a close. So these teams very evenly matched, and it shows on the court. They went back and forth a couple of times. The largest lead of this first half was four by Rochester. Morton never led by more than two. Your coach Becker pregame tells Zach all they wanted to do was win by one. And right now at halftime, they are leading by one. Brandy Bisping has seven of Morton's 16. And Coach Becker's alongside Zach. Zach, take it away. Coach Brandy Bisping picked up her second foul late in the first quarter. For her to get through the second quarter playing big minutes and not pick up that third foul, how important was that? That was huge for us uh, just to survive that. I mean, points are at a premium. I mean, it's a championship game. I'm not going to sit her forever, so I got to trust in that senior to do a good job. We went zone a little bit. We survived, so I think we're in pretty good shape. 12 of their 15 came in the paint there in that first half. When you moved to that zone, was that to address that a bit? Well, and protect Brandy. Um, we've got to do a better job of owning the paint a little bit and taking it out of there. They're, they're hard to guard inside, so we're trying to sag and we're doing some things, but uh, they're pretty good to get it inside. Best of luck in the second half. Thank you very much. Bob Becker, the Morton head coach, as his team leads 16 to 15 at the break, guys. Zach, thanks, coach. A one-point game, Morton on top through Brandy Bisping. Seven points, six rebounds in that first half as the Potters look to three feet. Morton leads Rochester 16 to 15 at the half of the 3A girls state championship game. This one has lived up to the billing to this point. Welcome in everyone, Zach Kirker above Doug Collins court where we have a one point game in the 3A girls state championship. Let's take a look at some highlights from the first half of this game where the Potters built a one point lead and they got started early after trailing four to nothing with an and one from their go to girl Brandy Bisping. She's got 7.6 rebounds on the half. Lindsay Dollard, the freshman, knocked down a triple later in the first quarter as we went back and forth. The Rochester was tough in this one. Madison Faulkner with a baseline J. That was the only shot that they didn't make in the paint for the Rockets. Angela Perry, two of her four points. She's got five rebounds to go with it. 12 of their 14 points, 15 points, that is, in the paint for Rochester. Havlin Doolin chipping in, but down the stretch, Morton takes the lead for good. Josie Becker lines it up from downtown, and they have a one-point lead, 16 to 15. We will have second-half action and an interview with Rochester coach J.R. Baduris after this. That is the Children's Museum in Uptown Normal. If you're waiting between the 3A and the 4A games today, that's a perfect place to stop by, check it out. Morton leads Rochester in the 3A state championship, 16 to 15. Let's take a look at the numbers from the first half to see exactly how this one has shaken out. Rochester didn't have a turnover until late in the first half, and then they came up with a couple. That, not coincidentally, is when Morton took the lead back in this one, Morton 40% from the field with two three-pointers. Rochester still has yet to get dialed in from downtown. And a bit of an unusual situation for Morton, who is just 2 of 5 from the strike. Normally, they shoot at about an 80% clip as a team. They are winning the rebound battle, though. Morton with a 16 to 15 lead over the Rochester Rockets at halftime of the 3A Girls State Championship game, a rematch of the 2015 title game that saw Morton win their first of two state titles. We'll be back to talk to Rochester head coach J.R. Maduras after this out of downtown Bloomington. Morton leads Rochester 16 to 15 at the half of the 3A state championship game. Rocket head coach J.R. Baduris, you guys have 12 of your 15 points in the paint. Is that a good thing or are you a little too dependent inside at this point? No, I think it's a good thing. We want to get post touches. The shots that we've had on the perimeter that we missed were set up with post touches. We just got to make shots. We had two turnovers in the first half. We replicate that and make a couple of shots. We'll be in good shape. Bisping in foul trouble early. She avoided a third in the second quarter. How do you attack her? Just got to do our same thing. You can't you can't overdo it to the point where you get out of what your rhythm is, but you got to seize advantage of opportunities to go at her. We'll try that in the second half. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. It is 16 to 15, and third quarter action is on its way. Back to you guys. 
16 minutes away from either a three-peat for Morton or a first title in the history of the Rochester girls basketball program. They're trying to join the football team and the girls soccer team as recent champions in their school history. And Morton looking for a third trophy to put next to the last two they've brought home from the state tournament. The Rochester Rockets as they break their huddle out of Sangamon County in the Springfield area, Central State 8 Conference, an enrollment of 776. And you see Coach Paduras, who also doubles as the athletic director. Boys golf title in 99, a girls track title in 94, girls golf, girls soccer, and football recently. Wes Lunt from Rochester playing quarterback over at Illinois. And Morton on defense first with the one-point lead. They're out of the middle Illini Conference and looking to three-peat. Up one to start the second half. That's a difference, Christy, for Rochester as they led as we've got a timeout immediately by Rochester to save that possession. Rochester came to state in 2007 and 2008 back when it was a two-class system in 1A and then two years ago when they lost to Morton. All three times they led at halftime and then lost the game. This time they trail at halftime. Maybe that's the right formula to win a title. And it's been a close game, just what we expected, really a defensive battle, low scoring game. Coach Padera said they need to make a few more jump shots, but it is, it's just what we anticipated. And you know, you think about on Morton's side, they are defending their championship. And there was an old Geno quote that said, you know, we're not defending anything that's being passive. We're going after the championship. And that's what Coach Becker said before the game is, you know, they want to be the hunter today. When you don't use a timeout in the first half, as neither team did, you can use a timeout just 10 seconds into the second half to save a valuable possession. That's what Coach Paduras did for his Rockets. They go immediately inside to Perry, but it is stripped away. And that's a turnover. Jump ball will give it to Morton. And uh, you'd expect it to be nobody else but Brandy Bisping to dive in there as soon as Perry put the ball on the floor. Rochester will put the pressure on here. Becker across the timeline. We haven't heard much from Dowell, so we'll see if they can get her involved on the offensive end. 15 points yesterday, has not scored today. Bisping has seven, nobody else with more than three. And this jumper is good. Kaylee Jones was one of those ones with a three. As she made a free throw earlier, now has five. Magro, two on two with Perry. Nice bounce pass, and Perry finishes. And for a good girl, big girl, what control she has over her body. Nice light on her feet, was able to gather and finish with the left hand. Here's Jones, no good. The rebound is pulled down by Rochester. Rockets had the largest lead in this game at four. That's knocked away, and last touch by Boone. Rochester thought that Jones touched that last, not the case, and it's Morton basketball, and Rochester had two turnovers in the first half. They have two turnovers in the first 117 of the second half. In the second half, they're a little more, first half you have the nerves, but then second half, it's the reality. Okay, this is the last 16 minutes of the game. Miss being attacked, misses, gets her own board. Her and Boone both have two fouls, and they're going at each other on both ends of the floor. Jones. She gets bumped out of bounds there by Perry. That'll be Perry's first. Morton's, they, they stay the course. They don't stray from what they do best. And that, again, we've talked about it. But the fundamentals, catching the triple threat, being strong with the ball, being resilient, and just having that calming influence on offense. Here's Dowell for three. Got it. Her first bucket of the ball game and a huge three for Tenley Dowell, the sophomore. Not a lot of people know this, but Dowell actually won the NBA National Dribble Dish and Swish Contest when she was eight and nine years old during the NBA All-Star Games in Dallas and L.A. I don't know anybody else who's done that. That's pretty cool. Knocked it down. They are three for five from distance. Rochester 0 for four. Magro changes that 
with the big answer. What a she shot. She went in on that, yeah, and she did that in 2015. She was coming off the bench. Her first shot she took of the championship game in 2015, she knocked down just like that. Jones left corner, back to Dowell. Duller, the freshman, working on Faulkner. Free throw line, Jones rimmed out on her, and nobody on Rochester went for the rebound. Boone and Faulkner looked at each other. Nobody went to grab the board. They almost lost it. We take a look at the back-to-back -back threes. Dowell on one end. Nice three-point shot by Dowell. Great form. And on the other end, he's hitting Magro right up top. Same shot, nice shot. Good job on both ends hitting the three. Magro bringing it up. Morton putting that pressure on. Didn't do much of this in the first half. And that's knocked out of bounds by Jones. But they did yesterday in the semifinal. They started to extend full court and really took control of the game in this same spot of the game against Simeon. Inside Perry. And to your point, Nathan, they did that as well against Stillman, Stillman Valley. Nice job by Perry with and one. And that's three on Brandy Bisping. So she didn't pick up the third foul in the second quarter, but she picks it up here early in the third. Angela Perry put the team on her back yesterday. She's got the Rockets back in front here today. Back and forth we go. Rochester has just taken a 22 to 21 lead over Morton in the third quarter of the 3A Girls Championship game. And we are joined by a Morton alumni Jadison Warham, who played in two and won two state championships. Is it easier to play in those state championships or to watch from the front row like you are today? Well, uh, I think it's easier to play. I feel, I feel like when I'm out there, I can do something, but in, when I'm sitting watching, there's nothing I can do about it. Your sister is a senior, JC, on this team. She starts. Did you have any messages for her before she went out there and played today? Yeah, I told her that it's your last game out there. It's your last 32 minutes, so make it the best and enjoy every second of it. You told me when we got up to this vantage point, it's awful cool to see all that white down there in the corner. How cool is it to have the support from this Morton community? Oh, it's awesome. It's great knowing when we come here that we're going to have so many people from the town coming to support all the way down to Bloomington. And, like, when we go back on the bus and do our little drive around, everyone's out in their driveway, like, clapping and cheering. It's a great feeling. And I'm sure you'll hope they'll be doing it today and you'll be with them. A student at ISU now, correct? Yeah, that's right. So you didn't have far to go. Will you go home for Morton for, uh, for the parade? Should there be one today? Oh, definitely. All definitely. right. Best of luck. It's a two-point rocket advantage. You'll need a little help from you down there on the sidelines. All right. Thank you. All right, guys, back to you. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Jadison. She had 15 points in the semifinal last year to get Morton into position to win their second straight trophy. Had a couple big tests yesterday, too, so she had to miss part of the semifinal game watching her sister to go take tests. you got to get that degree. That's the most important thing. Yes, <laughs> Outside, it's Sherman, Rochester, off the free throw by Perry. With the lead, and they'll get the rebound here. Perry now with nine points, five boards. That's Boone's fourth board. Go to Perry. Bisping's on her, and she's got three fouls. Inside Perry, off glass and good. Back to back buckets, five straight for Perry. She's very tough to contain inside at 6 3. And we talked about how much she's improved since 2015. She's gotten stronger. She's able to shoot that three point shot at a high percentage. So she's put in the time, and she's going to do a nice job at the next level. Outside Sherman and goes to Jones. Baseline jumper, no good. This the rebound to keep it alive. And they did change that last foul, at least on the stat sheet. They put it on Dowell, not on Bisping. So Bisping with two, not three. And that's why she can stay on Perry, at least for the time being. Becker. Two Bisping. Becker again, strong defense by Rochester. Becker got fouled before the shot. But right as I was giving Rochester credit for strong defense, Doolin commits the foul. Doolin was right there. She was right there with her. She gave her a little bit of body, but you know, overall, I mean, both sides, 25-21 score, good defense on both ends. Rochester has matched their largest lead. In fact, both teams' largest lead in this game has been four. Go, 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 go. 
Dolan puts it on the floor. And another foul against Brewer. That's her third. Team's third. Her third personal foul. See if they go to the bench. She's chasing Becker around. And last 30 seconds, having a little bit of trouble picking up two fouls. In games that are this tight, coming down to the crunch time, it's still three minutes left in the third quarter. But something that is important is that recognition and awareness on out of bounds plays. Becker driving on Doolin again. Dumps it in. Bisping for three. Good. Brandy Bisping. Steps outside, knocks it down, and Morton calls a timeout. She's got that range on the season. Knocked down 41% from distance. Buries the three here. Beast mode indeed. She's got 10 to go along with eight boards. And cuts that lead to one. For Rochester and good ball movement that entire possession. They drew a couple of fouls and finally find Bisping up top. Boone didn't close down on her. And Bisping just took her time. She saw she had a little bit of space, took her shot in rhythm, didn't rush it at all. I think that maybe in a couple years we will see her jersey retired along with her sisters. Yeah, I would think so. The whole family, you know, who knows? It's this family affair. Couple all states, already two state titles, naming that record book, 10 points, eight boards. And making that three, four of six from the field. Robinson, boom, back door. Dollar cut her off and Becker gets the steal. Morton can regain the lead. Becker. Stepping into the three, Bisping again, and Beast Mode connects. There's your senior leader stepping up with six straight points. She's getting in the flow now, and Morton is now five of seven from two-point range. Robinson to Perry. She tries to answer short and warm the rebound. This is where Rochester has to be careful. Morton go on these runs in a hurry. They've used big runs throughout the state tournament. 17-0 here, 19-0 there. 13-0 run yesterday. Boone grabs the steal. And then Dowell gets it back. She got it from Robinson, went right at Perry. Scoop layup for the sophomore. Eight straight, just like that for the Potters. And Coach Becker wanted the and one. There was a little bit of contact on the body. They didn't get it but still a good job finishing through contact. The Potter Nation getting loud on the sideline, and there's a charge. Coach Berneris can't believe it. Bisping drew the charge, and Doolin has four. And let's take a look at the Potters. As Bisping gets things going with her second three. And Becker got that started with the drive, penetration, and pitch. Robinson dribbled it off her foot. Dowell was there, went right at Perry. And again, she took that contact and finished right through it. And for a lot of young players, too, sometimes you take contact and you don't finish the shot, but just throw it up there. You never know, even if you get the call or not, try and get that bucket to go in. Dowell gets around Robinson. She went at Perry that time and is going to get the foul called. The Rocket fans can't believe that call. But it'll send Dowell to the line. And she went right at Angela Perry. Coach Begurus upset. Dowell didn't get the call the previous play, but she did get it on this play. And, you know, maybe it was a little bit of makeup call, maybe not, but there was, there was a little bit of a hit check. Misses the first, the 78% free throw shooter, the sophomore. Honorable mention, 3A All-State, her sister Tatum, part of the Morton Legacy. Older sister, graduating in 2014. Throw is good. She splits the largest lead of the game for either team. Dowell out, and Lindsey Dullard back in. A five-point Morton lead. Look at Dowell and Dullard. They're similar in terms of they're both very long. They like to shoot the three. They can dribble. They can pass. But both of them developing, and it'll be fun to see them next year. It's a 9-0 run. 
Three ball. Too strong. But the Rockets keep it alive. And that rebound back tap. No buckets in the last three and a half. That's part of the 9-0 Morton run. And for Rochester, you have to play through it. You know, it's ebb in the flow of the game. But you got to play through this run by Rochester and just try and keep it as close as you can. Perry through contact there. Didn't make the bucket. Didn't get the call. Jump ball now. We'll give it back to Rochester. It's Bisping and Robinson battling for that held ball. 23 seconds to work with here for the Rockets. Down five. For Rochester offensively, the tendency at this point in the game can be to tighten up, and I think we saw that a little bit in 2015 in the second half, that they were a little bit tighter, didn't necessarily go with the flow of the game, and so if they can relax and still play the way they like to play offensively, it'll be their benefit. Faulkner to Magro, inside Boone, and a foul against Morton. That's going to go as the second team foul of the second half. Second on Jones as well. So the inbound underneath. 7.7 on the clock. Robinson. Faulkner to Magro. has got to shoot it. And does not get the shot off. Baseline. So Rochester could not get a shot. Morton finishes the third quarter on a 9-0 run. They tie their largest lead of the game at five. And they're a quarter away from a three-peat. Rockets will try to come back as Bisping and Dowell put the Potters on top after three. Hi, my name is Nicole Robinson. I'm with the Rochester Rockets. Favorite moment of my season would be the postseason because everyone works hard and we could become like family. My role model would be my mom because she's so positive and funny and I wish I could be like her. Something funny about one of our teammates that people don't know is uh, Madison has a ghost. A talent I wish I had, I wish I could dance. A secret talent people don't know I have would be I can juggle. She put on quite the show with the uh, juggling of the mini basketballs for us on Thursday. And Nicole Robinson hoping to lead the Rockets to a fourth quarter comeback. And we're also hoping that Madison Faulkner's ghost stays away because she, <laughs> that's what they kept telling us, she has a ghost. She'll just randomly fall down at different points and they say she's got a pet ghost that she takes around with her so we did have to get them to clarify what know, it meant I, I that madison has a ghost yeah right i didn't really understand yeah, that, no, that okay. she just got it. falls down at random times or will bump into walls or whatever so that's how they okay. excuse that so all right yeah sounds like my six-year-old son just randomly falling out at times <laughs> Up top for Bisping, first possession of the fourth quarter. Final eight minutes of the season, or at least of the regulation of the season. Who knows, could be headed to extra for these two teams to decide this championship game. It's been highly contested throughout the first three quarters. Morton plays so well with the lead. They're not going to be in any rush. And, you know, when you can shoot free throws as well as they can and you take care of the ball as well as they can, then, you know, it's hard for teams to come back. And, again, it's only a five-point game, but it's still tough to come back. Take the air out of the ball. It's exactly what they want to do. Here's a three for Dowell, and that's a perfect possession to start the fourth quarter for the Morton Potters. They're, they're so smart. They execute so well. And just, just what you said, a perfect possession. Took a minute off the clock, at three to their lead. Rochester down off glass, exactly what they want to do. Get that post touch, get the paint touch, and Angela Perry converts. That ends a run for the Potters of 12 straight. Steps into a three. 
No good, but they get the rebound. Jones. And those second chance points are killer. Nice finish by Jones. Good left hand. But if you allow, you're playing defense for a long time, then you got to box out, seal, and go get the ball. Jones, the rebound to keep it alive. Second chance points for the Potters. They're plus 10 in that category, plus eight for the game. And there's a turnover right through the hands of Perry off the pass from Boone. And a substitution. Doolin, who has four fouls, will sub back in. And here's that last bucket. Jones kept it alive. And then here's the freshman, Lindsay Dollar, with a strong take with the left hand. She hit a three earlier. She's got five. They have four players with five points or more. Becker kicks it out. Dowell, another three. Too strong, and Perry there for the board. Rochester dodged the board. It seems like somebody got caught, and Dowell was wide open, but they got the rebound. See if they can score and convert. Nice job, Magro. Aubrey Magro, she's been the person to hit big shots for them, and a timeout called by the Rockets. A full timeout is the three falls for Magro. She's got six, and it's a 35-30 Morton lead. The Rockets looking for their first championship in girls basketball, but they are very used to winning titles down in Rochester. This is just in the last decade. Football, six of them for Coach Derek Leonard, including this year, girls soccer, Coach Jack Kucher with three, including the last two, and they will be the favorite to win it again as girls soccer getting started recently in the near future and girls golf in 2015 as well. Coach Paduras is their athletic director, so he's been a part of all of those and getting to congratulate teams, but you heard him tell Zach Kirker he wants to be part of the parade instead of just cutting the cake for the other teams and the other coaches. He wants his name uh, alongside those other state champion coaches. They're now down five. But I don't know what they got in the water down there in Rochester. We'll look at all those titles. It's impressive. It is. And I think that when you have that kind of that success in a the community, then each of the team, they, they get it, they get a sense, they come to the games, they feel how exciting it is. And just like with Coach Baderas, he wants to be, he is a part of it, but he wants that for his own players and his own team. He mentioned to us the thing that's been so consistent in those programs is the coaches. Even the assistant coaches don't leave, they don't change, and so they're able to get their message across from when the kids are freshmen all the way through. We see Aubrey Magro, she's been a part of this program for three years. And Coach Paduras and his staff, whether it's Coach Kucher on the girls soccer and his staff, Coach Leonard in football and his staff, consistency has been the key in the Rochester Rockets program. Now they're down five, putting a little pressure on. Corner, Duller. Swing the ball around the perimeter. Everybody getting a touch on this possession. Jones picked it up inside and a whistle. That's on Robinson. It'll be the team six, so they will inbound. First on Robinson. Doolin has four. Nobody else in the Rockets more than two, and nobody on Morton has more than two. Morton's in the bonus. And now Morton is in the bonus. They've been so deadly from the free throw line here at Redbird Arena over the last three years. between high school and college without the shot clock, they can take as much time as they need and work for that one shot, that perfect shot that they want to get within their offense. Got it on the left side, it's Jones pulling it back out. Becker. I think Boom. stuck down there on the baseline. Boom, triggers the steal. And then got it away to Magro, looking to run. They've got it again up top, and a push. And a foul against the Morton Potters. Couple of three-pointers got us into this position. Morton knocked it down, Dowell. And then on the other end, the Rockets got a big answer from Aubrey Magro with four minutes to go in the state championship.
Andy Bisping, the All-Stater for the Morton Potters. 13 points, nine rebounds, two assists. She's also drawn a pair of charges today, getting a little bit of everything done as she looks to lead her team to a three-peat here at Doug Collins Court. I think what says it all about Bisping is that she has more varsity wins in her career than any player in Potter history with 123. So if you have that many wins, you're doing something right, especially with two state championships looking for a third. A win today gives them 100 wins over the last three years. Meanwhile, Rochester is looking for win number 33, which they did in 2015 when they lost to Morton. They'll take 33 and tie that school record and get their first state title. They can come back over the last four minutes down five. Dulick to Boone. Baseline jumper did everything but fall, and Bisping now has got her double-double. And 13 points and 10 rebounds, and that's going to foul out Haviland Doolin. Two points, two assists, one rebound. And Doolin fouls out with 344 to play. Junior. Robinson back in. The last play that Rochester, last possession for Rochester, a good shot. That was a good shot that they, that shot they want to get. But he got a crash too. Morton right now is 13 second chance points to Rochester's three. Dowell makes the free throw. Coming into today's game, and their last five in this building, Morton 119 for 147 at the free throw line. That's 81 percent. That's why they have back-to-back -back state championships and the lead with 3.44 to go, looking to three-peat. Dowell missed that one. They have struggled there today, four for nine, but 81% in the last two state tournament runs, plus the semifinal win yesterday over Simeon. Full two possession lead, up six. Three ball is good. That's the juggler, Nicole Robinson. Who knocks it down? Her first bucket of the day. That was clutch. They are three for nine from D. And there's Warham with the answer. Her first bucket of the day. So a pair of seniors on both sides of the floor getting their first points in the state title game. And then Rochester turns it over. Nicole Robinson. Could not make the catch of that pass from Magro that was high. She knocked down this three from the wing. Nice job by Robinson. Now you see on the other end. Warren stepping back and knocking down the 15-footer. Two seniors hitting big shots. Morton's lead is five. Three minutes to go. They are in the bonus. Dowell will hand to Bisping. Boone guarding her. They've gone head to head for much of the ball game. This being cut off. Good help defense by Perry. Good rotation. He's able to find Jones. Now Bisping again. It's great patience with the ball. Boone diving in. A possession arrow goes to Rochester. So that's going to be a turnover. Lyric Boone with great defense to force. Bisping to put it on the floor. Perry dove in to grab it. Great Maduris in for the Rockets. Couple of subs in for Morton as well. As Sherman re-enters, so does Becker. We'll put some full court pressure on. Maduris. Magro. She'll try a three, short. Bisping the rebound, and she's fouled by Perry. That's three on Perry, and it sends Bisping to the line the other way, and that's exactly who Morton wants at the line. We've seen her here before, haven't we? She has made 54 free throws in this gym the last three state finals. But she misses the front end. Warham back taps it in. Morton grabs the rebound. 
So Rochester got a rare miss from Bisping and they couldn't corral the rebound. Right now, Morton's out rebounding Rochester, 23 to 16. Ball knocked out of bounds by Mangro. Boone will sub back in. For Morton, Jones and Dullard back in. Sherman and Warren Warham are out. This is a big defensive possession for Rochester. There's a timeout call by Coach Becker and the Morton Potters. They are trying to three-peat. They've got the chance alive with 1.53 to go. There's the history of three-peat in girls basketball. Public schools, which Morton is, it's been done twice. Bolingbrook in 4A at the bottom. To top was back when it was just a two-class system all the way back late 80s. Montini Catholic did it in 3A. They're the only team to do it in 3A since the expansion of classes. And Quincy Notre Dame very impressively did it in two different classes. They had to step up in 2013 and did Montini's run as they three-peated and Morton's looking to put their name on that list. That's it. 40 plus years of girls high school basketball on HSA four times. That's the list. That is tough to do. <laughs> yeah. That's why it hasn't been done very often. It's very tough to do. They're trying to win their 21st postseason game in a row. Look at the bottom right there. 99 and 8 over three seasons. Seven wow. straight wins of 26 plus and here at Redbird Arena, when you add in yesterday's game, all their wins have been by double digits. Now it's going to take some work to do that today. The free throw line, they're up five. Rochester trying to end streaks that we just talked about and get their first ever state title on the other side. Bob Becker has done a great job with the Morton Potters, but you also talk about consistency of the coaching staff. We talked about it with Rochester and looking at the Morton side, they have Bob Becker has been teaching at Morton for 24 years. Yeah. This is his 18th season as a head coach and his assistant coach is a Morton alum, Bill Davis. He's been the assistant for Bob Becker for 17 years. It's consistency. The same thing on, on the Rochester side we mentioned earlier with their assistant coaches and it's happened at Morton. And now they've got 150 to work with. We'll see when Rochester decides the foul. They did it on the last possession, but Morton got the rebound of that free throw miss, and they've still got the ball. And Morton will let Bisping handle that ball until they're going to foul her. And there is the foul given by Robinson. I don't think they wanted to give the foul there, judging by Coach Berdurus' reaction, hands behind his head. Looking straight up at the sky. I don't think they wanted that, and I don't think he thought it was a foul either, judging by his reaction. I'm trying to force Morton to give the ball up and get it out of Bisping's hand, but it's hard. You know, she has great handles. She knows she's gonna make the, can make the free throws. Today she's only one for four. She came in to this ball game here at State 53 of 62 in her career and today just one for four so has struggled at the line 19 fouls this is their last one and one and knocks it down the senior leader headed to wisconsin milwaukee a six point lead for morton second one is also good Robinson working it up to the floor. The last 90 seconds. Shot is off glass. Tap to Robinson. Magro working around the perimeter. And a foul against Becker. That's just Morton's fourth team foul of the second half, though. Free throws. Morton six for 12. Rochester two for three. One of those came on an and one for Angela Perry. Paduris hands to Robinson. Rochester wants to get Perry involved in this possession, get her a paint touch. Magro spins through the lane. There was no defender there, but she couldn't finish it. And then a foul, which is going to go against Bisping. Going for the rebound. I might have been surprised how open she was when she spun into the lane. There was nobody there. Under a minute to go, five team fouls on the Potters. I think we're going to get a timeout here by the... Good, good take by Magro. 
I think she was surprised she was so open, missed the bunny, but stayed with it. Second chance, she get another chance to score. She wanted the and one there. They waved that off immediately. <laughs> Timeout called by Morton. They have two left. Rochester with three left. Here in the contest as the Morton Potters holding on to their advantage. Tonight, the Class 4A girls basketball title is on the line, and CSM Plus has complete coverage at 7.15. Watch Geneva battle Edwardsville as both teams try to take home a state championship tonight on CSM Plus and streaming on the NBC Sports app. And a bucket for Rochester and another timeout. Madison Faulkner on a well-designed inbound play was wide open at the free throw line. They need that quick hit. They got what they wanted. Now going back on the defensive end, they need to stop. They need to do it in an efficient manner because Morton will be happy to just run the clock down. 56 seconds to go. Rochester with two timeouts left, and yet wide open is Faulkner. Knocks that down from the free throw line. A good catch and shoot. They just did a little hop step. Nice quick release. She's got five points. And that is the lead for Morton now. Five points, 56.3 seconds left. A foul by Rochester will put Morton into the double bonus. The possession arrow belongs to Morton if there's a held ball. And the Potters have been called for five fouls, so Rochester is not into the bonus as of yet. You see what they've done here. They've got three second place trophies. Rhonda Goad, the head coach in 07 and 08 when they were in 1A, and then the 2A in the first year of the four class system. And then with Coach Paduras two years ago losing to this Morton team. So three second place trophies. They're hoping to get a comeback here in the last minute. On the other side, under Coach Becker, Morton, a pair of fourths, and they finally broke through against Rochester two years ago. And now 33 and three, 33 and three, looking to make it 34 and two this year and get the school record in wins and the three-peat for Coach Becker. Had a losing record in his first year and then his fourth year. And since then, everything over 500. And a state title contender, Morton. Rochester to watch for the long ball. Gets it in the hands of Bisping. And the foul given in the backcourt by Rochester. Lindsay Sapetti. We heard from her sister, Laren, earlier in the ball game. Here to watch as a fan, a former Rochester star and now player at Illinois Wesleyan. So Coach Padura has put a couple of players in just to give those fouls. Bisping at the line. is good. Morton having some fun. They're all cheering. Smiles over there too is Bisping's second free throw off the mark. Perry grabs the rebound. Here comes Rochester down six with 48 seconds left. They're three of ten from distance. Robinson's made one. Magro's made two. She's got it in her hands here. It's Robinson for three. Off the mark. Terry set a screen and got her open. Now Becker across the timeline. And they get it to who else but Bisping. They're going to have to foul her. It looked like they were trying to, and then Magro will grab her around the waist. It looked like Robinson was trying to foul her, and they couldn't get the call. And Bisping is so solid with the ball. She comes to that jump shot, gets in triple threat, elbows out, and, you know, she's not going to let that ball go. And we go back to the free throw line again, and that's the thing is that they practice free throws so much, not only in practice, but then the players putting in their own time. She makes that one. They were 500 to today, 7 to 14 before that make. Back in the late 90s, Courtney Smith made 57 in her career in the tournament, 95 to 97 at Carlisle. Bisping just got that record. She already had the 3A record. Now she has the overall career record for three throws made in the state finals. Now it's Rochester. Perry driving in. They'll let her go. She gets the layup and a timeout. Perry's got 15. 
They're going to have to trigger some turnovers immediately as they are down by five with 13 seconds to go. And the Morton fans who made the 25 mile trek over starting to feel it. They got the three feet signs up. And they're they, filling almost half the lower bowl on this side. They were swaying back and forth a moment ago. Now they're just jumping up and down, ready to go. Forty-two thirty-seven for Morton. Up with 13 seconds to go. Rochester has just one timeout left. And one thing to point out in high school ball, unlike college or the NBA, the clock does not stop on a made basket. We saw that last night in the semifinal between Geneva and Frem when Geneva scored to take the lead with four seconds left. The clock doesn't stop. So if Rochester uses that last time out and then the ball goes through the bucket with less than five seconds left, Morton doesn't even have to inbound the ball. The game, where the clock would run out and Rochester wouldn't be able to stop it. So that's a case there. The Potters on top, Brandy Bisping, 17 points, 11 rebounds, five free throws, but she had a pair of huge threes. This is our win trust play of the game. As Bisping knocks down one of her two threes on the day. This gave Morton the lead. And again, we talked about her legacy that she's leaving behind when she graduates and what a career she's had. A pair of threes back to back. Morton gets it inbound to Dowell. She runs away from Boone who finally gets a hand to her with 9.2 left. As Dowell will go to the line. She's two for four today. She's in double digits and 10 points. She hit a pair of threes. They had that run there where Bisping made a pair of threes. Dowell made a pair of threes. And Morton went from down four to up eight with that 12-0 run. And Dowell makes this free throw to make it a six-point game. Now we'll try to make it a three-possession game with nine seconds left. These Morton players, they have ice water in their veins. They don't seem to be rattled by anything. Dowell's free throw is good. Makes that one. Robinson across the timeline. Baduris for three. That's off the mark. Rebound to Becker. She'll dribble off the clock. And for the third year in a row, the Morton Potters are the queens of 3A, the fifth team in the history of Illinois to three-peat. Fans loving it, the players loving it. And you see the sadness of the Rochester Rockets, the second time in a three year span. They've been the victims of this Morton three peak. Well, great job by both teams. It was what we expected, maybe even a little higher scoring game than we anticipated, but they both left it all out on the floor. Shakes, mutual respect between these two programs as they've met. The country financial player of the game, who else? Is number 13, Brandy Bisping. Another double double, 17 points, 11 rebounds, and she caps her college career with the three piece. She does a little bit of everything. She knocks down the jump shots, can drive, rebound. Great all around game. Two huge threes. Zach Kirker's got Brandy Bisping with the three feet on the court. Three in a row, Brandy. Can you rank them? Where does this one go? I mean, I feel like every year they just get better and better. It never gets old, never gets boring. I mean, I can't thank everyone enough. This is awesome. If I had told you you'd be five of ten from the free throw line today, how would you have felt about that? I'm very disappointed in myself, but I'm just glad we won. Uh, you guys go on a 12 run late in the third, early in the fourth. Where'd that come from? I feel like that's just our spark. Every once in a while we have a great spark off the bench and Lindsay and Kaylee and they really know what they're doing in that position. I mean if I'd have told you if you go back take us back to when you're a freshman I say okay the next three years you're going to not only play at Redbird in a championship game but you're going to win all three of them. Can you even wrap your mind around that as a realistic possibility? No honestly I don't even think the first one set in yet let alone three in a row. I mean it's such a blessing can't thank everybody enough. Well you're a three-time state champ it is official Brandy congratulations. Thank you so much. All right go over and join the girls and have some fun let's see if we can't get your head coach in here coach Becker. Can we pull you in real quick. 
I saw you sort of take a knee back here in the background a second ago. Tell me what's going through your head right now as you wrapped up your third straight state title. I don't, I just, I don't know. It's unbelievable. I mean, I got great kids, great coaches. Uh, we didn't want to let our community down. All of Potter Nation came out. It's an unbelievable thing. I mean, that's a great Rochester team. JR does a fantastic job with them. Our kid just made a few more shots today. Brandy said she was very disappointed in herself for going 5 of 10 at the line today. I'm sure you're extremely proud of her to wrap her career up, and she's been such a huge part of all this. I will completely miss Brandy. I'm so proud of her. Uh, that's not typical that she would do that, but she does so much more for us. What a great kid. She's a champion through and through. A 12-0 run late in the third, early in the fourth quarter. That was the difference in this one. Where'd that come from? Uh, I mean, this team's made a run most games all year, sometimes multiple, but we got one little stretch run there, uh, and that's a credit to their defense. They don't give you anything easy. The points were at a premium most of the game. We finally just found a way. You know, Brandy hits a couple huge threes, and it gave us just enough cushion. You're third in a row. Can you rank it? Where does this one stand? Oh, my God. This is, I mean, it, they just, not e these kids make it look easy, but it is not easy what they're doing they are I, the, how they've handled success is off the charts because there's a lot of teams that are successful but then what do they do next I mean these kids have not become complacent they continue to battle work hard to get better they've taken everybody's best shot all year for a couple years and, and there's now we get to enjoy another a third year in a row where we are top dogs in 3a it's unbelievable still standing congratulations coach it's been fun to watch thank you very much I appreciate it that is Bob Becker your three-time state champion the fourth high school in IHSA history to win three consecutive on the girls' side. Guys? Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Coach. Let's get it over to PA. Time to hand off some hardware. Presenting individual medallions and team trophies are members of the IHSA Board of Directors, including Board President Dr. Chuck Nagel from East Peoria High School, Tim McConnell of Erie High School, Tim Moore from Bloomington High School, B. Kent Jones from Breeze Central High School, Katie Hassan from Rock Ridge High School, and Greg Bradley of Decatur Christian. At this time, please meet the Rockets of Rochester High School, who finished the season in second place with a final record of 32 wins and four losses. First meet the principal of Rochester High School, Brent Ashbaugh. Athletic trainer Peter Stoll. <laughs> Athletic director and head coach J.R. Baduras. <laughs> Assistant coach Lindsey Howard. <laughs> Assistant coach Brandon Rose. <laughs> Assistant coach Ken Tugner. And your Rockets, Abby Walton. Haviland Doolin. Molly Ashbaugh. Lyric Boone. Aubrey Magro. <laughs> Lindsay Sapetti. <laughs> Jordan Hanlon. <laughs> Nicole Robinson. Grace DeRocher. <laughs> Peyton Baduras. <laughs> Madison Faulkner. <laughs> Madison Kaufman. And Angela Perry. Yeah. 
At this time, please meet the Potters of Morton High School who finished the season in first place with a final record of 34 wins and two losses. First meet the superintendent, Lindsey Hall. Principal Marjorie Johnson. Athletic Director Scott Jones. Trainer Katie Gavin. Head Coach Bob Becker. Assistant Coach William Davis. Assistant Coach Megan Hassler. Assistant Coach Brooke Bisping. Scorekeeper Todd Bisping. Manager Dave Kindred. Videographer Connor Fisher. And your Potters, Tinley Dowell. Maddie Becker. Josie Becker. Courtney Jones. Cassidy Sherman. Brandy Bisping. Megan Gold. Bridget Wood. Olivia Remert. Lindsay Dullard. Claire Kraft. Kaylee Jones. And JC Warren. And now will Coach Badouris and the captains from Rochester High School please step forward to receive the second place trophy. Captains from Morton, please step forward to receive the first place trophy. There's a trophy when they start a practice that first week in November. This is everybody's goal to be getting this trophy right here for the third year in a row. It's the Morton Potters who get that goal accomplished, and they have made this arena kind of their second home over the last three years. They have, and Coach Becker always talks about consistent excellence, and that's exactly what they've done the last three years is consistently be really, really good. He mentioned in the interview with Zach, they took every team's best shot. We sure saw that today. Rochester gave them everything they could for 32 minutes. They just fell a couple possessions short. Rochester had a great season. You know, you see some tears over there, but there's nothing to hang their heads about. You finish second, and, and that is a great year. And, and I think when they, in a couple of years, they'll look back and they'll be really, really proud with what they've done. Right now, it might sting a little bit, but great season for both teams. On the other side for Morton, the seniors capped their career. Three straight titles, Brandy Bisping and, uh, and J.C. Warren. Bisping off to Wisconsin-Milwaukee. 100 wins over three years. Is there any way to put that in perspective as, a, as somebody who watched it as an observer? There's not much you can say about a career like that except tip your hat to her. Um, what a great player, and Coach Becker talked about great character, is a gym rat, has worked really hard, and Morton has a lot of players coming back as well, so look out for them again next season. They sure do, and they'll get started on next year immediately. They'll have the parade, they'll enjoy it. Their community back in Morton, the three-peat complete for the Morton Potters as they win again, and that'll do it for us here for Zach Kirker, Christy Faulkner, our producer, Russ Leonard, our entire fantastic crew. I'm Nathan Weaver. Thanks for watching Girls High School Basketball on CSN Chicago. Thank you.